Hello and thanks for joining us today. My name is Choma Phillips and this is Stories from Africa by Nsingi Africa Television. I never thought for one moment my entire life that a maize cob, a simple maize cob, could bring me to the verge of tears. Until the other day when we visited a friend of ours um, at his organic farm and he's growing maize pure and clean and wants nothing to do with GMOs. And he gave us a maize cob. And I looked at it and my husband said, we're going to dry it. As you can see, we're in the process of drying it. We're going to dry it and keep it um, for the moment when you know we have our own place and we can plant it. And there was an elderly gentleman there. He's maybe in his 70s or 80s and he was talking about the old days and so on and so forth. And I started to tell him that for my husband and I, this probably represents one of the greatest legacies um, and inheritances that we could ever hope to leave our son, and if we're blessed with other children, our children in the future. This is about 480 grains or so on one piece of maize, each seed representing hope for a generation to come, that is and is to come, um, hope of clean, healthy food that is safe from contamination, safe from the interference um, that man has decided that he wants to wield on the environment and on society as a whole. <laughs> such a simple thing, simple looking thing, carrying and representing such profound possibilities. It just makes you think. You know, the other day on uh, TikTok, one of our viewers asked us a question. He asked, okay, and you, where is the proof of what it is that you're telling us about? Where is your own garden? What are you doing? Now, where you see me sitting is literally a miracle. We found a place to live that has a garden. Um, and it has a lawn that the landlord had painstakingly planted. And we respect that. One of the most special things about this place is actually that same landlord, because we asked him, would it be possible for us to, to plant a few things so that we can you know, sustain ourselves you know, with fresh vegetables and plant whatever else you know, we can grow here that can be our legacy into the future for our children? And he said, yes. And so today I want to share with you what it is that we're doing. Um, in this little garden, in this little corner of the world where we are situated currently. Um, around the perimeter of this little tiny plot, we've planted a bunch of butternut squash. We've planted some pumpkin. We planted some uh, traditional vegetables, merenda and sagat, saget and um, we've planted spring onions, we've planted sukuma wiki, which the same organic farmer gave us, um, uh, what is it called? When he tore off some branches, this kind of sukuma, you can actually just plant little branches and then it will propagate again. We've got rosemary and we've got lemongrass. Um, we've got groundnuts, we've got beans somewhere. We've got limes, we're hoping will sprout. Um, a mango in a corner somewhere, we've got wild gooseberries that we're hoping we'll, we'll take. We've got chilies that are growing somewhere underneath the ground. We've got potatoes and we've got ginger. Just in these tiny little pockets at the edge of the fence. And when you think about it and the number of people who actually do have access, either balconies or, um, or little patches of earth like this, to be able to plant, we're thinking to ourselves just how much more we would be able to do if we had access to the entire lawn. Um, we're not greedy for it, we're just thinking about the endless possibilities available. For instance, this organic farm that we hope to give you a tour of in the near future. If you look at the plots of land adjacent, they are barren and they are dry. But this guy has created an oasis, an Eden, that is so beautiful and that he has resolved, at least for most of it, is going to be made up of purely organic plants. Um, he's got traditional vegetables mixed in with some of the more commercial varieties. But 
more than anything is what he has set his mind to do with the potential that he has available to him. And that is an inspiration in itself. Because as we sit here, the conspiracy that is at work in the world, all around the world, is ridiculously potent and sinister and so evil that if you grasp a hold of exactly what they're plotting, you would be horrified. Horrified. And when you think about how easy it is to actually make a way out of that, how easy it is, I think that you would be scrambling as fast as possible to plant as many seeds as possible in as many corners that you have access to as possible not purely for consumption because as you can see this one we're not going to eat anytime soon but also with a mind to the future the gentleman we visited at the organic farm spoke to us about um, how it was in the olden days where their moms or their grandmothers would take a section of the harvest and would hoist it above their cooking area so that the smoke would travel upwards and dry the grain where it was and no matter how hungry they got no matter how much food they lacked in the intervening period it was resolved as a family that nobody would touch that grain to make it food nobody would touch it to make it food that's how invested they were in the future. It was resolved that nobody would touch a single grain of that maize which they had preserved. The other day, a pot of, I think I told you this story, of, um, what is it called, of millet. Millet seeds were discovered in Western Kenya, buried underground, still intact. The seeds almost, I don't know how many hundred years old, seed. Just how invested was that family to preserving that seed that they planted it somewhere underground, preserved, not planted, hid, secured it for the future so that their generations would be able to get access to safe, healthy, wholesome food for generations to come. When you understand just how committed um, these plotters of evil are to doing damage to our health and to doing damage to our environment and to making conditions as untenable as possible for humankind with a view to owning things for themselves, by themselves, whatever this elitist global club is, when you understand just how committed they are and just how dedicated they are to their cause, you would become just as driven and just as dedicated to make sure that yourself and your sons and your daughters and your great-grandsons and great-granddaughters and grandsons and granddaughters for however many generations to come are as protected as they are determined to destroy. And that takes a lot. It means setting aside the expectations that we have had of life. This whole script Go to school, work hard, get a job, you know, buy a house, buy a car, get a dog, have your children, whatever. That whole thing, raise them in the same system so they can go to school, work hard, get a job. All of that you would, re, you would reimagine with great passion and great haste, especially in light of all this nonsense that they're doing now with chat GPT and all the other AI things that they're trying to throw out there. Because as you can see, their own AI programs make a rubbish of the entire system of go to school, work hard, get a job. Because if your AI can write your term papers, then what's the point of a university education? Up to PhD level. What is the point? All you need to do is type in a certain search string and the AI obeys your command and delivers you the paper that you want. Then you customize it slightly and there you go. And now Adobe have released some creative tool that is also dependent on AI. So there goes creativity. So books can be written, songs can be written, photos can be created, designs can be created, etc., etc., etc. You name it, just using artificial intelligence. But the one intelligence that no one can ever supersede 
is God's own intelligence. Because even if they try to mimic whatever it is that they're trying to do with their GMOs and whatever they try and do, they cannot create the original seed, which has so much value, so much health, that it communicates with your body to the extent that restoration and health and nurture are provided to just one being with one bite of food. As a people, we have to make a determination as to how it is that we want to proceed going forward. This might look like a simple thing. It might look mundane, it might look commonplace. But to the discerning, of mind and of heart. This may as well be a sword in my hand that I have taken up to do battle to ensure the survival of my people. What are you going to do? Please like, share, subscribe and talk to us in the comments section below this video. Let us know what you're thinking. Let us know what you're doing. Let us hear from you what your battle is on your own home front. Thank you so much for being with us today.